Hey everybody, it is Friday, August 2nd. It's a little after 6 a.m. and let's get started. Cash $12.25 for 12.3 miles and we're looking for $2 for every mile. It's $2 for 2.5 miles. $7.49 for 11.6 miles. $14 for 9.7 miles. Dollars and one cent for 6.4 miles. Dollars and 41 cents for 3.5 miles. Eight dollars and one cent for 9.9 miles. Dollars and three cents for 12 miles. Dollars and 12 cents 4.2 miles. Dollars and two cents 11.9 miles. Eleven dollars and fifty cents for 12.2 miles. Dollars and 57 cents for 9.2 miles. Dollars and five cents, 7.3 miles. Eight dollars and seven cents for 12.2 miles. Six dollars, 7.4 miles. Four dollars and fifty cents for 7.2 miles. Five dollars and fifty cents for 5.9 miles. Ten dollars and 41 cents for 12.2 miles. Dollars and nine cents, 15.9 miles. Dollars sixty nine cents for six point five miles. Eighteen dollars and fifty cents for fourteen point one miles. Six dollars and forty four cents for eight point six miles. Dollars and six cents seventeen point five miles. I've been at home now for an officially one hour. It's gonna it looks like it's gonna be a really a really slow day. Seems like it's going to be a long time before I get anything that's worth taking, so I'll talk to you a little bit about today's topic. $7.03, 8.9 miles, no. So today's topic is going to be about taxes, and uh, a lot of DoorDash drivers, and in fact most people that are self-employed, don't really understand how to do their taxes. It's, it's always been a struggle for most people who are independent contractors how to manage their finances. Uh, most people that have a regular job, the company withholds the taxes from their paycheck, so they don't worry about it. All they do is they work, they know that they're gonna get that, whatever the, the dollar amount is for their paycheck, they put it in their bank account, and that's their money, and they know, well, that's my money, and, and I know that my employer has taken the taxes out, so I know I can just spend this money and just have a good old time, you know, paying whatever I have to pay with my money. And they don't even think about what what portion of that money is goes to um, pay for taxes because the employer manages that. Well, when you're self-employed, you're your own boss, so you have to manage all that. And it's a very strange concept for most people who do... Um, who, who are self-employed and have to do it. So you have to understand that every quarter you have to pay your taxes. And it's very strange because most people think, well, I only have to pay my taxes every year. I, I go to my, uh, my tax guy and I give him all my paperwork and then they file my taxes every year. Well, if you're self-employed, you still have, you have to pay your taxes every uh, quarter. So I know that sounds really, really confusing because it sounds like, well, then do I have to go to my tax guy every quarter to pay my taxes? Uh, you know, and then that's going to cost a lot of money. Well, no, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is is get this very simple form called the 1040 ES and you fill it out and you can write a check and you send it off and that is it and then you've you've paid your est it's an estimate you're estimating the amount of taxes you 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 have to pay for that particular uh, quarter and it's not always exactly every three months sometimes it comes out to every comes out to like the last four months sometimes it's the last three months sometimes it's the last two months it all depends upon the time that the time that occurs between the last time you the last time the taxes were due and the next time the taxes were due and you can find all that stuff out on irs.gov or just type in what are the what are the when are federal what are, when are quarterly taxes due 
and it'll on you know on Google and it'll show you the 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 dates that they're due for the calendar year. So um, yeah, that's uh that's the uh, general gist of what you have to do. And if you don't, you're going to be in big trouble. So it's always best to pay your taxes quarterly because it's the law. Dollars and sixty eight cents for two point six miles. Twelve dollars two cents nine point two miles. I know there's a lot of you out there that tell yourselves that you're just going to deal with it at the end of the year and you're just not going to worry about it. But that's a problem because what's happening is you're actually spending the money that you're supposed to be putting aside to pay your taxes. So when it comes time to pay the taxes, there's such a shocking high amount of money that you have to pay that a lot of times it ends up causing people to go deep into debt because of that because not only do they owe the taxes um, that they didn't pay throughout the year they also get a penalty for not doing it and uh, a lot of times what happens after that is that because they don't have the money to pay their taxes they have to pay it they have to make like monthly payments now to the government and they start to fall deeper and deeper behind. It's very similar to what happens to people who go into credit card debt. It's one of the most deadliest things that you could get yourself into. And the most nastiest thing about owing taxes to the to the government is is that you can't get rid of those in bankruptcy. Those those will continue to come after you throughout your lifetime. Just googled it for the due dates. So you can see here I think this is for 2024, I think. Yeah, it says 2024. See right there? 2024. So the first due date coming up is, let's see, payment period. So any money you made between January and March is due April 15th. And then April to May, June 15th, uh, June 1st to August 31st. September 15th and so on and so forth. Then this thing here at the bottom is when and then the final ones always do the following year which is January 15th for September through December. So those are the due dates and uh, you can google it yourself by just type by just typing in quarterly tax due dates. A sample of the 1040 ES form. This one's from 2022. But the general gist is see you put all your information in there and it's and it's just this little coupon. Let me try to zoom out. See, there's there's like four coupons that that are on the sheet, and they're and they're put in. See, this one's payment voucher number two, and it's all just your basic information in there. You know, your name, address, social security number, tax ID number, whatever it is that you have, and then, then just the amount that you're gonna pay. Oh, something's coming in. Ten dollars and twenty nine cents for six point three miles. No. And yeah, that's all you have to do is um, is uh, pay your estimated amount that you're going to pay. Now, I usually put in about 15% uh, of whatever I make. And that's usually the works for me. Um, I think that if you are a really high earner, you should probably put in 20% to be safe. And if it's your first time doing this... I would do 20% and you don't have to worry about overpaying. Like let's say you're like, oh no, I'm going to give them too much of my money. Well, when you file your taxes, if you overpaid, you get it back as a refund. It comes back to you. So you don't ever have to worry about, about overpaying. You really have to worry about underpaying because when you underpay, whatever you did not pay, you get penalized on. So um, I have found over the years of doing it that my my uh, tax rate is somewhere usually between 12 and 15 percent at least that's what it is for the moment and you know how the you know how taxes are they change all the time so you really have to keep yourself educated and up to date on what's happening if you're on social security keep in mind that if you're not at full retirement age and you're collecting social security this is the most amount of money that you can actually earn for the calendar year before you will actually not be able to get your social security money. And if you earn over this amount, $22,320, for every dollar that you earn uh, over that, for every $2 you earn over that, they will deduct a dollar from your social security money. So all you people out there who are collecting social security, 
and doing mm-hmm. gig work, keep this in mind. You don't want to get yourself into trouble either if you if you haven't reached full retirement age yet. And you're welcome to look that up as well. Just just type in Social Security Income Limit 2024. I forgot to mention, like if you're on Social Security and you're wondering what is considered actual income that they count uh, as uh, income, it's only income you actually earn through working, not uh, not dividend payments, not pension, not um, uh, interest that you get from CDs, no passive income, like rental income, nothing that's passive, anything that you're actually not doing as a business, it's just coming on in passively, that is not counted. It's only stuff that you actually have to go out there and, and work to do. And so um, there's actually, you'll know too when you get the uh, when you get a, a tax form at the end of the year, because it will say like, um, it'll it'll say like, I think it'll say like INT at the end, or it will say um, like if it's royalty income, I think it says, I think it says dash R at the end of the tax form. So those, ty- those types of things are not considered um, incomes and will not affect your social security uh, limit. miles. I also forgot to mention that um, you have to check with your local, your state and city and all that stuff for tax, taxes regarding um, the rules for those situations. Here in Nevada, there's no state income taxes. So that's something that I'm luckily here, I don't have to deal with. So I don't know much about it. Like if you live in in a state like California or... um, what are the other ones like New York or um, any of those states that have state taxes? I don't really know what the rules are for that and how you're supposed to report. So you'll have to do your own investigation for for state taxes. But um, I'm just talking about things that relate at for taxes at the federal level. So don't forget to do research on your own your own state. Seven dollars and five cents, ten point one miles. Dollars and four cents, seven miles. Dollars and ninety-four cents, nine point six miles. You are um, paying your quarterly taxes. Don't forget to make copies of everything that you submit to the IRS because they'll charge you. I mean, you have to be able to have documents to show your tax person, or just for yourself when you're doing your taxes. You've got to make sure that you're able to pull up your records to know just how much you paid for that entire year. And 56 cents, 2.5 miles. Nine dollars and four cents, 4.2 miles, let's go. Oh, I can't believe how slow it was this morning. Man, I was just struggling to get uh, an assignment that was two dollars for every mile. And uh, I decided, well, I'll just start talking about the topic of the video because I mean, it's it's right now it's 7:50 a.m., so it's already getting super late. I really only have I'm only gonna work until 11. So what is that? Eight, nine, ten. I got just three hours left in the day. Two hours out of the five, I spent just just rejecting offers. So it was not a. Uh, it's not gonna be a, a fantastic day today to to make any kind of significant money. But um, oh well, we'll just keep on going. Weather right now is is uh, cloudy and there's like a a 15% chance of rain. So um, if it starts to pour, which it can, even though it's only a 15% chance of rain, when it rains here, it usually starts to pour. So if it starts to pour, I'm just going to head on home and just wrap it up. So it's going to be sort of a touch and go situation today. Let's take a look at what we're shopping for. We're shopping for some macchiato coffee creamer, some green giant rice veggie cauliflower, a boneless skinless chicken breast, Hormel black label original bacon, and then a Starbucks cold brew black unsweet premium coffee. The people that watch my videos, uh, they're the ones who came up with this topic for today about taxes. and. I thought, wow, that's a really good thing to discuss for the, for, uh, for the video because that's the most common thing where, uh, where people who do gig work get into trouble because they don't, they don't know anything about um, 
taxes and how they work when you're self-employed. So I've been uh, self-employed for a very long time, since 2007. And uh, so I, I have a, a strong understanding of, of how to do taxes. I'm not a tax advisor, so don't quote me as being Mr. Know-it-all on taxes. I'm just telling you from a, from a person who has the experience of doing their taxes for a, a long period of time. And so just the most important, that's probably one of the most important things that you have to do is file your taxes and pay them quarterly. And it, and I know that for a lot of people who, um, who do this type of thing, it's very strange to file your taxes quarterly or not file, but just to pay your estimated taxes. It's not even really like you're filing. It's just this t- that tiny slip of paper and you're just mailing it off. And they also have an online thing that you, which I don't trust because I don't want anybody stealing my information online. So I just do it the old fashioned way. I print out the, the little voucher and or the pay stub and then I, I fill it out and I write a check and make a copy of it. And then I just, I just drop it off at the post office. And that just, you know, that's always worked for me and the best way I have found to, uh, you know, to take care of it and make sure it's getting paid. I'm all done. Let's get out of here. It was easy. It was no problems at all. Five minutes, 1.3 miles, going to a house, leave at the door. Please leave at front door. Do not ring the doorbell. Through that night, boys ask stupid questions. We just laugh at the secret we can't hide. For the first time, Cinderella can't hear the clock strike. With her lips pressed against my shoulder It's not forever It's just a moment we can smile at when we're older It's not forever It's just a moment we can smile at when we're older how slow it is I guess I'll just head on back home all right so I looked up what the penalty is if you don't pay your taxes quarterly you decide well I'm just gonna wait till the end of the year well if you don't pay them quarterly and you wait to the end of the year the current penalty for 2024 is eight percent 
So let's say, for example, oh, something's coming in. Uh, Uber Eats, five dollars and a penny, six point nine miles. No. Let's say, for example, uh, let's just say you only owed a thousand dollars. It's like, oh, you only owe a thousand dollars since you haven't paid them. Now that's probably not the case, but it's it'll be easy to do the math. So at eight percent, you didn't pay. You're gonna pay an addition. Oh, sorry. So for every thousand dollars that you owe. Uh, Uber Eats, $3.51, 3.8 hours, uh, 3.8 miles. <laughs> For every thousand dollars that you owe the government, you're going to have to pay an extra $80 because you didn't pay it quarterly. Now that's crazy. That is a crazy amount of money. If you actually owe $10,000, now you're talking 800 extra dollars. And most of the time, your tax person just to not stress you out, they're not going to even tell you that, that, that you got a penalty. They're just going to say what you owe. And that's, I'm sure that's what most tax people do because, you know, they try to make it as simple as possible to their customers because they know their customers don't understand taxes. Uh, Uber Eats, $7.04, 7.6 miles. No. Yeah, most people don't understand taxes. So your tax guy will, will basically just tell you, give me your paperwork. They'll take it. And anything that's missing, they'll ask for it. Then they'll, they'll finally get to it and do it. And they're just going to tell you how much you owe or if you're going to get a refund. They try to keep it as simple as possible. And then they get they basically give you the, the form to sign. Oh, something came in from DoorDash and we missed it. I don't know how. Let's see. Let me re reboot my DoorDash. So uh, this, is the, this is the very reason why it is so important to do your research and make sure you're doing what is required of you as you are your own boss. And as your own boss, you're your, you are, you are not, you're both the, the boss and you're the employee. So you've got to put on your, your boss hat and start paying those taxes. Dollars and 25 cents, four miles. The income tax brackets for 2024, depending on if you're single or married filing jointly. So all you have to do for this is kind of like um, you just look to see where you fall at and it, 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 it stacks on top of itself. So if you're single, the first $11,600 that you make is taxed at 10%. And this is after you calculate your standard deduction or whatever, if you itemize your itemized deduction. So let's suppose you have like a like a five thousand dollar or or twenty thousand dollar deduction oh hold on something's coming in from uh doordash seventeen dollars and 29 cents for 7.3 miles uh shopping for 11 distinct items well shoot i gotta go all right so i don't have the tax brackets in front of me anymore but essentially uh, what is happening with the tax bracket is is that every for every amount that you you're making um, above each tax bracket that's the amount of money that you're being taxed on that amount so it like so it first starts off at a low amount of a percentage that you're being taxed and then it consecutively gets higher as you enter into the new bracket with that with that additional amount of money that you've made beyond the previous bracket. So a lot of people, because a lot of people get confused when they do their taxes and they think, well, I made, you know, $50,000 this year. So that means I've got to pay in this bracket because this bracket shows that if you make this amount uh, of money, that's how much your percentage of your taxes are going to be. That's your tax bracket. So, you know, but that's not how it works. It's the amount of money you make after your deduction and then uh, then it starts to stack based on how much you made in the first bracket the second bracket third bracket all the way up to whatever the heck you made and that's how you figure out um, uh, that's how they calculate in general that's how they calculate how much money you owe on your your taxes but uh, the standard amount that most people should expect to put aside is somewhere between 15 and 20 percent for the average person that's how much money you should be setting aside for every for each paycheck or for each week or each month whatever you, however you calculate your 
your income. That's how much you should be setting aside so that you don't get yourself in any trouble. And then once it's out of your account, you don't have to worry about it. And then that stress of, of how much you owe is gone. And then when you finally have to do your taxes, you'll know that you've already paid all your taxes and you got no penalties. And then you have a great chance of possibly getting a great refund because maybe you had have this huge deduction or huge expense that's tax deductible. All right, I'm pulling into the um, Sprouts. Let's look at the shopping list. We're gonna be shopping for olives, corn, artichoke hearts, organic lemons, organic bananas, organic corn, heavy whipping cream, popcorn coconut oil, give me health foods, organic roasted seaweed big sheets, avocado oil, oh great. Chameleon cold brew, organic concentrate mocha cup. They have the weirdest items here. And, the, and three uh, tomatillos. <laughs> All right, let's go in. Artificial love, we just make it up Cause reality will never be good enough And even if it was, we just mess it up Cause we already are Addicted to the right I never meant to fall All I wanted was a touch of artificial love We just make it up Reality will never be good enough And even if it was, we just mess it up Artificial love Artificial love All right, once again, we're done. Let's go. I'm going to be going to a house. Leave at my door. If you could just text me after you drop it off. Thanks so much. I truly appreciate your service. Smiley face, prayer hands. And uh, it is a 14 minute drive, 6.2 miles. I think the only uh, problem I had with this order was... Uh, they, the corn that was the that was the last thing I thought I was gonna ha have a problem with but it was the corn they didn't have the corn that you wanted they only had a uh, Del Monte brand corn which you said was fine and then after I had already checked out and was loading the grocery she sends me a message saying if they have any organic corn that would be better <laughs> I didn't bother to message her back because I'm like, what's the point? I'm like, I've already checked out and she could probably see on the app that I'm already on my way. And they did, that was the only kind of corn they had, but there's no point in having a long-winded conversation with the customer. Plus it's uh, it's DoorDash, so that the tip is locked. All she can do is, is lower my, um, you know, give me a lower rating or whatever. So, but it's based on her message, she seems like a customer that's flexible the road oh no I've got to go the long way there goes my miles so it's 3.9 right now now it's 4.4 I just added on an extra half a mile to my journey great well I guess since this journey is long I we only got well we, I have eight more minutes until I get there so that gives me enough time to tie you some more tax stuff so uh, when you uh, when I do my, when I do my, how I manage my taxes is, I have two separate accounts. I have an account where all of the income flows into, and then every so, every like every week, or I don't know, every month or whatever, I take out 
eighty percent of that money. Or actually, no, because since I since I'm being, I take I only pay fifteen percent. So what is that? Eighty-five percent? Uh huh. I think it's eighty-five. So eighty-five percent of whatever I made for that period, I pull out and put to my personal account. So that way. I I keep the government's money completely separated from my money. There's no intermingling the monies because the last thing you want to do is start dipping into the government's money, money. <laughs> which is what most people do because they put all they put that money completely into their um, their own account. Um, what you could do is you could, if you don't want to have a completely separate, because mine is like a completely separate checking account, but what you could do is you, if you have a checking and savings, you could also just transfer the 15%, you know, every period or whenever you get it into your, a savings account that's connected to your checking account. And, but whatever you got to do, but you got to keep it separate from your regular, it's so, it's so easy to mess up. If you're intermingling government money with your money, because you, when it's in your own account, you start to think to yourself, this is all my money. <laughs> and then you start spending it. So, um, yeah. So that's what I do. And, I, and what I recommend is keep them separate is what I'm trying to say. Well, it hasn't rained yet, but it looks like it could rain any minute just based on these clouds. You know, if you watch my videos regularly, you guys know it's always sunny every day. So this is, uh, this is one of those situations where if you see this many clouds, it's definitely going to rain because overcast weather is not a thing in Vegas. I should probably tell you guys also about your deductions. You want to make sure that you're constantly tracking your miles every day because those are tax deductible i forget how much how much money it is per mile i want to say 69 cents 67 cents something like that look it up look at mileage deduction and uh that is so important because as a uh, delivery driver you're putting on tons and tons of miles on your car and that is that is that is a gold mine when it comes to tax deductions. So when you um, do that, you want to keep track of it in your, in your, on your phone or in your computer using something that's similar to Excel. I use Google Sheets. And so if you know basic formulas on how to use Google Sheets, um, it, all you do is you enter in your start miles and end miles and it automatically calculates your um, total number of miles that you've driven for that day and uh, that's your record that's what you keep as a record forever in case the IRS ever audits you you can show them your your um, doc your Excel document or your Google Sheets document and it'll show whoever's auditing you that you've been tracking your miles consistently 
And uh, it's not anything that you submit um, every year. It's just proof, just like all your receipts. You know, you don't have, you don't mail in all, all the receipts that you get. You just make sure you have records of them so that if you're ever audited, you can produce them to the auditor to show that you are up and up and not some kind of scam artist trying to scam the government. And um, Google Sheets is probably the easiest way to do it because it's free and everybody loves free. And, uh, and it's great, it's very powerful. It, it makes it so simple to track not only your mileage, but your, uh, your income. And it can, it can uh, when you do it right, when you set up it right with your formulas and um, learn, what, do searches on YouTube for you know, make, well, working in Excel or Google Sheets to make you know, basic formulas which would be, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, all those basic, they're real simple to make the formulas, but you, if you've never done it before, you'll have to learn uh, on the internet how to do it, and once you know how to do it, it's really simple. And then, uh, so yeah, then it will track, it. it will track everything just like it would with, with one of those expensive accounting software programs. So that way you can um, know how much money you're making every day, every week, every month, all that good stuff. And it's easy for you to um, calculate if you do it every single day. Oh, people, well, hold on one second. I got an offer that came in. $20.97 for 13.7 miles. That's a no decline. So people were asking me like, well, how else do I make money? So here's, here's some of my artwork that just sold right now uh it's some kind of like um a tile with my artwork on it and then i get like a royalty because it sold and this just sold literally just right now so they sent me a message so i got six dollars and 97 cents for it so uh yeah <laughs> so that's how i that's the other way i make money eight dollars and 16 cents 5.5 miles 17 dollars and 77 cents for 8.2 miles shopping for 10 items at smart and final and then five items at albertson's <sighs> well it's slow today i guess well i have no choice i actually just declined it i saw where the drop off was on one of the deliveries and it's over near the near las vegas boulevard five dollars 3.4 miles two dollars and 12 cents 3.5 miles dollars and fifty cents 3.7 miles fifteen dollars and 25 cents for 15.1 miles dollars and 40 cents for 4.3 miles okay well that's the end of the show nothing else came in and um yeah <laughs> i ran out of time it's already 11 uh, a.m so i've got to get started on the video and you can see we made very little money and we I almost ended up just barely making a dollar for every mile if you look at the total miles that I drove. And so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, information about taxes since that's so important. And um, yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, just throw them in the comments. And uh, thank you once again for watching and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye for now.